Not very underwatery, not very Sharknado, maybe. Over the years, I've taught students all sorts of different game builds, but I keep going back to an old favourite as the best way to introduce you to a lot of complex aspects of Scratch, but in a really nice staged way that's, I think, quite easy to understand. And the game that I, I'm going to do is one where we have, uh, it's called, I call it called the Fish and Shark game. We have a shark, shark chases the fish and you have to control using keys on the keyboard. So here's the thing, that's what we're going to build in this video. And I want to introduce you first of all, because some of you may be starting from scratch, pardon the bun. So I'm going to have to just walk you through some real basics. Now, the way it works is this, this is scratch, top right hand corner here where you see this cat. That is where the game will be played. To trigger the game, to start the game, we'll press this green flag to make it go. And then over here in this area, we have our, where our code is going to go. And we just drag the blocks out to put them there. And we drag them back over there to get rid of them. So this is going to be a fish and shark game. No cats in the fish and shark game. So I don't want that cat. And to get rid of that cat, I'm just going to head down to the little mini version of it here. It says Sprite 1. I thought it'd be called Cat. Never mind. But there's a bin there, so we're going to get rid of it. Now, this leaves me with a white background. And this is also, if you look over here, it's sometimes known as the stage. And sometimes I'll use the word backdrop. Backdrop, stage, to me, they're interchangeable words. So if I've used those two words, that's what I'm talking about. The sort of background, if you like. But here is a white background not suitable for a fish and shark game. We want an underwater scene. Now luckily, right down the bottom here, Scratch comes with the ability to choose some backdrops. And there are options here. You can upload your own, you can go on the internet, save one, upload it, any old picture, you can put that in there. You can get a surprise background, which, um, hmm, not very underwatery, not very Sharknado, maybe, but, uh, there wouldn't be swimming fish or flying fish. I don't know, it's just not right background, is it? We'll get rid of it in a second. The other option is that you could paint your own one, and if you want to be very autistic, why not? Or, the final one is to choose a backdrop. You'll see this one that we've got here in a moment again. Let's go back to choose a backdrop here. And we have lots of different options. And I can't see the one that we've already got selected randomly, but if I scroll down, maybe we'll spot it. Um, somewhere, I just have to shout out if you see it. Who's going to shout out first? There it is, urban. But to the left of that, quite a little bit of a beautiful twist of events. Twist of fate, not events. Anyway, underwater one and underwater two. Mm. I'm going to go with underwater two. I'm going to click on it and look at that. There's an underwater scenario. Hmm. Now, I actually have, I'm actually on the stage here, and I can come up to here where it's got code and backdrops and sounds, and we're going to be um, certainly switching between code and backdrop quite a lot. But on the backdrops here, I find that I've got the original white one, I've got the urban one, and I've got the underwater one. Well, I don't want the white one, so I'm going to click and bin it. I don't want the urban one, I'm going to bin it. So I'm left just with this underwater scenario. I'm going to click on code again right now. Now, I've got a lovely backdrop. So you can choose, you, it's part of this task, you're going to have to go and get a backdrop. I guess most of you will be going for underwater one or underwater two. Or if you're feeling very artistic, you could draw one. Or if you want to go on the internet and find something more realistic as a backdrop, then go and grab a, a photograph off Google and use that as your backdrop. It's not difficult to do. Oh, my apologies. It's difficult to do if you do that. Um, on here, just upload a backdrop. Try it. So what we do want is that we do want to have a fish and a shark, and we're going to start with the shark. Now, once again, down here we had choose a backdrop, and to the left of it we've got choose a sprite. 
And again, we've got the same icons. We could upload pictures of sharks or we could have a surprise sprite, which if I click it, gives me a young man there who's called Sam by the looks of it. Hmm, I think Sam's going to struggle underwater a bit. So let's get rid of Sam by pressing that one there. And Sam has gone. We can paint a shark if we wanted to. Or fortunately, I've done this for many years now, choose a sprite. I just happen to know that if I scroll all the way down, it's alphabetical. Do, 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 he says. Oh, a puffer fish. Not seen that before. Might be oh, a winking puffer fish. I'll be using that one later on. But I have, I've got shark. I'm not sure what's going on there. It's like a hammerhead shark, is it? I don't know. It's a bit weird. But I like this one, mainly because he's got three different costumes, which I'm going to show you in a moment. So I'm going to click on shark two, and he has appeared here. And a moment ago, I said he's got three different costumes. Well, we've got code, and just like with the backdrop, We've got costumes, and you can see here there are three different types of image for that shark. And we're going to be using those costumes quite a lot. You can see, actually, they've got funny costume shark 2A, shark 2B, and shark 2C. Okay, that makes sense, because we've got shark 1 and shark 2. We're just not using the shark 1 picture. So, here's our first task. I'm going to give you a piece of work to do now. What we've got is this. I want the shark, I'll go back to costumes actually. I want the shark to be like this. And he's going to flip. Watch this, sh this shark here. Watch the big version. I want it to be flipping between those two costumes. It's sort of like he's sort of angry and trying to bite. Because we're trying to, we're trying to eat fish. So we want that shark to flip between the two costumes. So how do we do that? Well, we need to give the game some code. All right. And I'm going to explain to you. I'm not, I'm not going to do this as watch and repeat. I'm going to give you little tasks to do. Here's your first task. We want to make this shark switch between the two costumes so he looks like he's biting away, chomping away. Right, we know that when we to start the game, we have to press the green flag. And we can find a command to, when the green flag clicks in the events block here. It's the first one. Now, what we want the shark to do is in looks here, we have this one down here to switch costume to. And we know that we're going to be, sometimes we want it to be as shark 2A and sometimes it's shark 2B. So I'm going to need two of those. And you can see the costumes just by, well, we can't actually see the costumes by clicking on them. Never mind, we'll have to go back to costumes here. So shark 2A, shark 2B, ignore shark 2C. So we know that we need a switch costume to, we need 2A and 2B. But here's the thing. You need to have a little bit of a delay between the two of them. So we need another block. And this can be found in control. And that is the block. Well, I say it can be found. Yeah, the fact found in control. There it is. That is the block at the top here. Wait one second. Now, you can have fractions of a second. You can put 0.1 if you wanted to. That's like a tenth of a second. But what I want you to do is the following. Now, there are two more blocks that are required, but here come the instruction. Here comes the logical order. I want you to start the shark's costume as 2A. I want you to wait a period of time, maybe not a second, maybe not 0 0.1 of a second. You choose and experiment with how long you should wait before it switched to shark costume 2B. And then you're going to need to repeat that. Now, the temptation is to use this block here, repeat 10, and pull that out and then glue everything together, because things just glue together like this. But actually, if I break them apart again, a bit more room, actually, I don't want to repeat 10 times. I want the shark to do this, not constantly, to never stop. I wonder what one other word we might see on the left there that might make the shark keep doing this 
I'm trying not to use the word. <laughs> Keep doing this all the time, never stop. The whole point being is, can you use the three blocks we've got here, grab one more from over here, and then you can right click and you can duplicate blocks. Hmm. One of those blocks is gonna need duplicating, we need one more block. But basically you'll know when you're right, because Mr. Sharky will be in the middle of your screen chomping away and he won't stop chomping until you press the stop button. Now, if you can't work it out, there's a solution video coming up in a moment, but that's the task. Make the shark start chomping away.